Welcome to Inside PTI, weekly videos designed to get you the trial results you want, agronomy explanations you need, and insights that will set you up for success this season. Today we're going to talk about sulfur, one of the most important secondary macronutrients needed for high yields. So one of the things we do at PTI every single year is we're looking at ways that we can support sulfur management on the farm. Now let's talk about sulfur a little bit. It is an essential component of plant growth. We have key processes like chlorophyll formation and protein production. It's often considered the fourth major nutrient behind nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And one of the things with sulfur, it's, it's, it's been different over the last decade with sulfur because the Clean Air Act came in and really forced a lot of coal um, producing units to really clean their act up per se to, for cleaner air for the environment and so the total deposition of sulfur that was being emitted in the atmosphere is a lot less now than what it was say back in the 90s so basically it came, it came down to this once the Clean Air Act was, was put in and what was instilled we, you know, we were getting free sulfur in the past, but once the Clean Air Act came in, now all of a sudden we don't get this free sulfur and we're starting to need to apply sulfur to our crops each and every year. So again, here's a list of the macro soil nutrients as well as the micros. Uh, the primary macros are nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. The secondaries come in as calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. So five things I think that, that I always tell myself about sulfur. Corn needs about 0.1 to 0.12 pounds of sulfur per bushel of corn produced. Okay, so that tells you how much we need to apply. For me at the PTI farm, we use sulfur along with nitrogen and we're at a seven to one ratio. What does that mean? Well, if we're putting on 180 pounds of nitrogen onto our corn crop, we're applying 25 pounds of sulfur. You can do the math accordingly, but 225 pounds in would lead to 32 pounds of sulfur. 275 pounds of nitrogen would lead to almost 40 pounds of sulfur. But regardless, a 7 to 1 nitrogen ratio. Only 40 to 50% of total sulfur is taken up by flowering, which is totally the opposite of nitrogen. Nitrogen is almost done by flowering or pretty much done. Sulfur is just kind of just getting started. And sulfur is very immobile within the plant, which means the plant is unable to compensate for low levels of sulfur that could occur late in the season by moving sulfur from older leaves to new growth. It just won't happen. And here's the other thing it worries me about sulfur is the sulfur is very leachable. It's going to move with water. It's probably worse than nitrogen. And I call it the toilet bowl effect. You can get flushed. You get a lot of water, a lot of rainfall. It's going to move sulfur within that soil profile and you're going to leach it. And this scares me a lot because as we talked about earlier, we need sulfur late in the season. So here's what sulfur deficiency looks like in corn. And, and back in 2009, um, I guess it was 2018, we saw a lot of sulfur deficiency in corn. A lot of growers were calling me saying, hey, I think I've got nitrogen deficiency, but this intervenal yellowing is just a classic symptomology of, of sulfur deficiency in corn. And I guess one of the things in, in 18, when we saw a lot of this, we were able to kick on some of our irrigation systems and apply sulfur as soon as we saw this. And we corrected this situation really, really quickly. Again, that sulfur will work fast if we can get it into the soil profile. Here's an interesting uh, bit of information on sulfur. As we look at uh, A&L Great Lakes Soil Laboratory, they're looking at samples that have come in in 2019. I just want to show you some results here. This is results of all the samples from Illinois, and I've circled sulfur in the middle of the graph here. Um, and look at the arrows that go up into very low, low, and medium. 98.3% of the samples sh are showing up in medium or low. 98.3, it's incredible where we're at. Remember what I talked about, the Clean Air Act? We're not getting the free sulfur that we had before, but I don't think growers are, are applying sulfur now, and that's why these soil samples are coming up super low. Look at the, the picture on the screen here of my soybeans. This is from PTI. The two rows on the right are where we've applied sulfur. The two rows on the left are where we didn't apply any sulfur, and, and it just shows up right to the row. It's just drastic differences. But again, uh, I'm worried that the growers don't have sufficient levels of sulfur in the soil. That's Illinois results. Let's keep going. Let's go to different states. Here's Indiana. Again, sulfur, 95.6% of the results are medium or less. 
again, we're seeing that trend of lower values. Here's Michigan, the same thing, 87.4% are in that low, or I guess less than medium, okay? And then we go to Ohio, 93.6. The trend just continues on and on and on. We've got these soils that are low in sulfur, and, and, and finally here's Wisconsin, 94.5%. So this is a trend I don't know that I like, but it just goes to show that we probably need to be putting some sulfur on if you're one of these situations where we're low in sulfur from the soil test. So how are we applying sulfur at the PTI farm? And one of the products I wanna talk about today is SO4. And this is pelletized gypsum from calcium products. And this is a 21% calcium product. Now this will not adjust pH. It's non-pH neutral, neutralizing. 21% calcium and 17% sulfur. Now, when we've put gypsum on in the past, we've had some challenges with it because how it spreads, we'll get into that here a little bit later. But one of the things I've always thought about gypsum is the fact that we're getting sulfur from it might be one of the, 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 the best additives or ingredients to gypsum, giving us that nice response. But again, it's a 21% calcium, 17% sulfur. This is mined out of Iowa, okay, and being brought into us at the PTI farm. Um, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful product. Now I'm gonna go in here and get, in, get inside of this, this sample so you guys can see this. And, you know, when we look at gypsum in the past, it was scrubber material from some of the coal plants. They scrub the stacks, okay? And they're getting that gypsum, but it's wet and super hard to spread. Sometimes guys had to use uh, vibrating uh, spreader beds just to get it to feed to the belt, to get it to kick out. This is just beautiful material. It's pelletized. And so this actually looks like a lot of, you know, let's say diammonium phosphate or even a potash material, but really easy to spread. We can put this in a spinner box, even application, and it solved a lot of our issues from that scrubber material that we've used in the past. So a really nice product to spread. Here's one of the spreader trucks that we're using on the farm. Again, just a regular dry box, and we can spin this 80, 90 feet, no problem, due to the fact that it's pelletized. Very easy application. All right, now this is from Calcium Products, and one of the things that I really liked, this is one of the first things I learned about Calcium Products. On their website, they've got a little calculator that you can put what crop you're growing, what your yield goal is, what your soil test result is for sulfur, and it'll give you a recommendation based on um, your organic matter levels that you have in your particular field. So if you're not familiar with sulfur and how much your crop needs, this is a nice little tool that you could go through. Again, you can go to calciumproducts.com and you can get this calculator. All right, here's some results from our SO4, a pelletized gypsum from Calcium Products in 2019. It was the first time we used this product. But uh, um, on corn, we're looking at 6.2 bushel yield advantages, which basically led to just over break even. We were bringing in a net of just under a dollar per acre, okay? That is corn. Soybeans were a totally different story. This is where we saw the biggest response. Remember that picture of soybeans I showed you earlier, that tremendous visual response from putting sulfur on beans? And I, I guess I'm interested in this data because you know 4.6 bushel yield increases on the beans from this SO4 material, which led to almost $18 of net profit. Now, why was the corn less than the soybeans? I don't know, we need to do some more data on this. Again, it was our first year of testing the product. One of the nice things we do at PTI is we're gonna do it over and over again. Not just last year, we're gonna do it again this year and we'll do it again next year. So we'll get some long-term data in and really really learn what this is doing in both corn and soybeans. The other thing I like about this too is we're gonna dig some root pits out in the field. So when you come to visit us at, P at the PTI farm this summer, we're gonna dig some root pits where we've applied the SO4 pelletized gypsum where, and, and then where we haven't and we'll see some differences hopefully in soil structure. Because a lot of folks say, well, you know, you're applying gypsum, it makes that soil softer. And that's one of the things that I wanna see um, after, after, after we've been applying this for a number of years. So today's inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is, sulfur plays a major role in crop production. Soil test and pull tissue samples for sulfur during the growing season. Measure to know if sulfur could be a yield limiting factor for your farm. Half the battle to coming up with a solution is just knowing you have a problem. Remember, in order to achieve maximum yields, many of us may need to apply sulfur to set ourselves up for success. For more information or questions, feel free to reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer, or you can email us at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. We'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. In the meantime, thanks for watching.